All right, we're going to do a Medieval Combat video review, this time between Sir Durin on the left and Duke Miles on the right. This is a um, practice combat between these two gentlemen. Uh, they're doing it for the purposes of training and fun, so it's not tournament footage. And as you can tell, this is, or you might be able to tell, this is SCA combat. So that means it takes a hard blow to the head or body to win the fight uh, with the edge of the sword. Uh, in this case, there are wooden swords, basically. Um, and a hard blow to the uh, limbs will disable the use of the limb. Because this isn't a tournament, they're not necessarily falling over to tell us, you know, very dramatically who died. Um, but we'll go through each of these passes and see what it is that we can see to glean, and then um, we'll stop after a few. So, right off the bat, you know, you want to take in people's stature. Miles, pretty tall and lean. Sir Durin, uh, you know, a more typical height. Um, you can see that they're both fighting with center grip shields, and they both have relatively long swords, Miles' sword being a little bit longer, and they both might be able to stab with their swords. Okay, so that's the end of the first match, and uh, the camera work starts out a little bit shaky, but there's some interesting things for us to take a look at in this first match. So first, uh, a couple things to look at. Miles is also fighting with a Depylon shield. That's uh, the one that looks like a, a circle with then smaller circles cut out on either side. Um, that's uh, sort of a more ancient shield style. Sometimes people can take advantage of the depylon uh, and the holes, but believe it or not, it's actually not much weaker than a typical round shield. Um, and uh, both these guys are, it looks like, pretty accustomed to fighting with those shield styles. So they both also have a sword forward position, um, and they're both right-handed, which is also very important to take a note of. So... You know, that's where your defense is. Oh, the last thing, if you're not familiar with this particular group, you're not allowed to strike the near below. So as you look at it, as a right-hander, obviously your main openings are going to be coming in on this side of the head and then over the top of the sword to that side of the head or into the leg on either side. But as that shield gets pushed forward, it really cuts down on those angles a lot. So your main openings that you're really needing to defend are sort of this quadrant, and if you get deep enough, this quadrant, or even in the back of the body. So they've both got the same openings, roughly. Miles' shield is larger, and his sword is longer. Um, so uh, it, it's, a, it's a pretty even matchup. You can see right off the bat, we're opening with a rotational shot. So uh, Miles, you'll see he's doing a lot of shots that rotate around the hand. So if you take a look at this area in particular, you'll see that his power, in this case, comes a lot from... First, the bottom of the sword travels forward, and then once the, it's sort of like the pummel is moving forward, and then once that uh, moves forward enough, the, the, the tip whips around in sort of a rotational shot. A um, little difficult to describe right now for me verbally, but I think you can see what I mean. So uh, his hand goes forward in circles, and then the, then the tip of the sword uh, circles down and in. It's a really quick way to throw a shot, and it's really good at striking that opening, and then, in this case, it didn't hit. But then the hand and the and the forte of the sword is also blocking you for defense as well. So when a counter shot comes in, like, say, an offside, like this, you should have pretty good defense. Now, in this case, that comes in right, you know, on the edge of the wrist, so it doesn't count as a good shot, um, either because it's not hard or it's not in the right spot, but you'll see that a lot. You'll see Miles attacks for that quadrant, and then um, the counter comes in here. So as we continue to watch um, the fight progress, there's that same shot and counter again. Boom, boom. So obviously Miles is looking to throw that uh, as an opener. And, uh, and there we see the counter offside again. So we see the same, the same two blows going back and forth a couple times there. All right. Um, let's move on and watch the next match. Here you can really see also a difference in the fighting style. So Miles, instead of standing out this time, actually wades in. <laughs> Sorry, I should have let the entire ver I should have let this entire bout play. I was just excited to talk about it. So let's let's look at this next match. But you'll see right off the bat, Miles is actually moving in and getting big and ducking down. Um, that's what uh, Sir Octomasades used to call driving the school bus. I think. So that's when you get in close and sort of do a smother defense. Uh, works really well with the center grip, especially if you're used to getting low and standing relatively squared up. So you remember before. Uh, Duke Miles stood at this distance and threw his shots. So this time he closes in. See, that, that back foot goes backward. Um, you see his back foot going back. And then that's actually not a backward motion. He uses that front leg to move forward and close the gap. So he's masked his movement. That sword now coming forward, that's not a threat. What he's doing is he's starting to control and smother this space. Um, so that's actually sort of like a wet blanket protecting him there. 
and then as soon as he sees a movement, he's going to move forward. So what, what made him choose that moment to go forward? There's a few things going on. I've gone back and forward a little bit, and the camera's moving up and down a little bit as well. I apologize. But you see his opponent's sword move just a little bit, and then he shifts forward and then shifts back. And the moment he shifts back, Miles is like, aha, I'm in. I'm going to get in and smother. Now, he's not charging. It's not a jump in. It's not a burst of activity. And, of course, that same shot we've seen four times already, that, ca that counter offside is going to be corked up and ready to go. We know that it's ready to come. So he's got to watch it. And now, look, Miles now has his space here. Now, this is where a stature difference can make a really big difference, right? Miles actually doesn't necessarily have the advantage for being taller here. He definitely gets some advantage uh, on shots coming in like this, but it also means that he's really open to wraps and other things as, as low shots. So how do you maintain your height advantage that allows you to throw down over the top of your opponent's shield while also simultaneously protecting your legs? As you, uh, as you lose track of your opponent's sword, you get lower. So you can see Miles' sword and shield has given him the defense here, and Miles is going to stay relatively low. His shield is able to protect his legs. He's blind right now. He can't see his opponent's sword, but he can see his opponent's feet. So he's got to stay low, and he's risking a little bit, but as he comes over the top of his shield, he's probably seeing... What's he seeing? He's seeing maybe a little bit of the, t the sword tip as he comes over the top. Now he can see the basket hilt. He knows where that shot's going and he can block it, right? And then we can see the height come in. There's that rotational shot. Height comes in, bang, into that opening. So that's the same sort of mechanics that we've seen, and that's the one advantage that in, in close, I think, a tall fighter has, is that a tall fighter can be tall or short, um, whereas an av average height fighter like myself, we can only be average height, right? All right, next pass. So that's that same exchange we saw. Miles is really liking this this opening shot here. That this time, instead of the hand, the, the pummel pinioning straight forward, there's a little bit even more rotation at the beginning, but there it is. Bang, that same rotational really fast. And uh, it's just enough to get past the guard. And then the counter just comes in as a matter of... Um, again, we keep seeing that counter offside as a matter of instinct. All right. So here we see that same smother defense, and something interesting just happened. I got excited again and paused the video. Let me go back. See if maybe you can pick it up. So we see that same smother go in, and then look at the look at the development. So I'll call that one engagement because I want to go back uh, and uh, talk about what happened there. This is something I don't see a lot of people do, but is totally fine within the SCA so far as I can tell. Um, so here comes this mother defense, and this time instead of just getting his sword in the way, he actually takes his blade and pushes his opponent uh, and controls his hand with it. So he's actually what he's actually done is contact uh, with his with his blade, which is totally fine. It's not hard enough that it would count as a blow, but he's pushing his opponent's weapon. Right here, he goes there, and I'm pushing you out of your comfort zone. Now Miles doesn't have a ton of attacks from here, but it's a pretty good way to sort of put your opponent off balance and get a little bit of control. Now, the risk here, as you can see, is exactly what's going to happen. From this position, you can uncork an offside to that side of the head, and that happens, and Miles is just barely protected from it by his own basket hilt, so it almost gets him right there. So um, that's the sort of trade-off, but sort of interesting. And the other thing I'll call here is when you see, uh, if you watch this rotation here, you might be able to get a read on what that next blow is going to be, right? So it starts out it starts out looking when the hand dips down, when you see this rotation, uh, even though it's happening slowly, it might look like this is going to turn into a leg shot. Um, but instead, it's actually chambering the arm up and loading power into the triceps, because here, now you're ready for the offside. That first, that first motion is actually a wind-up to throw an offside shot here. And he's just waiting for it, and there it is, right? So... This is in a position where you've got a bunch of strength saved up here and here, and what you really want to do is uncork uh, an offside shot, and sure enough, there it comes. Now, the challenge is Miles is sort of red that an offside is coming, gets his shield up to protect himself, isn't even watching his opponent's weapon, gets his shield up, and then counters for the leg. Now, uh, this is a good point. Throwing while you drop, really smart. You have to, it makes your opponent void out. 
and that drop actually stops you from getting your um, getting the top of your helmet clipped. All right. That is actually one of my favorite techniques to use um, against a kneeling opponent. So again, SCA peculiarity, someone kneeling because they got hit in the leg. But uh, a thrust to the shield is a really good way to open the shield up. Now, in this case, uh, it didn't work, though, because really solid defense and using that, that right-hand sword um, to block your offside slot body. So let's go back and take a quick look at that. Um, so right about here. So Miles comes in, uses the thrusting tip of his sword, and because a center grip shield has a handle right down the middle, it's pretty easy to tip that shield left and right. And against a kneeling opponent, particularly, you can bobble the shield, and when you, when you hit a shield to the inside against a, a same-handed opponent, that's going to direct your sword tip this way, right? And just as we said earlier, that first, uh, that first blow that can look like it's going towards the leg, that thrust can actually wind you up for another shot. So when your sword goes down into that position, it winds you up for a high rotational shot like we saw before, right? So there's the thrust, and then the rotational shot comes in here. Um, and in this case, it's a really brilliant offside shot that provides both offense and defense as protection, right? So watch what happens with the sword interaction here, because this shot that's going to come in this way actually provides attack and defense at the same time. So there's the shot, and you can see where the swords just interact with each other. That shot, although ends up missing, drives the attack down. So it provides defense and attack at the same time. Really cool. All right, here we see uh, getting low again, right? And another attempt at that sort of deep offside body shot. And here's where you see, um, you see, you see something, in my opinion, pretty interesting. When I fight from my knees, I tend to move around a lot. Uh, that really depends regionally. Some people don't like you to do that. But in this case, actually, both fighters are planting. The knees are planted here, and then Miles' feet planted there, both pretty squared up. And the reason why, um, I should point out, the reason why Miles isn't getting any closer uh, in the kingdom that Miles is from, it's considered rude to step past the knee line of your opponent. Actually, technically, the knee line would be right there. So if Miles were, for instance, to move his feet here and here, he could lean way over his opponent and crowd him, but that's not considered really kosher um, uh, by convention in the West. But you will see... Uh, as he approaches, he's going to get real close, real fast, change his pacing as he comes in, and then we're going to see that this time the slot works. And then why does it work? It works because it starts off a shield punch. So he's coming in at a pretty steady pace, and then bounds in, squares up, drops his shield, and brings his defense. Because he knows right now, I've already seen so many offsides come this way, there's a decent chance there's one coming. His opponent says, I'm not going to throw that just yet. But the moment he starts to throw that offside, Miles not only does, just as we saw before, uh, getting two things done with one action, this time it's Miles' turn. He's going to pump that shield out. That provides his defense against the sword, and look what it does to the shield. It bobbles the shield for a moment. You've got to get your sword in a really awkward position. It's not awkward if you're a duke, I suppose. Um, however, to take advantage of that. So he comes in. Shield defense and shield attack at the same time, and then a deep, deep offside, this time right into the underarm. Uh, so that might have tagged the underarm, might have tagged the armpit. So either sword arm or kill, either way that fight's over. So it's actually getting two things out of the shield at the same time. Block the sword and hit the shield, then throw into the opening you just created. Cool stuff. I want to be able to do that. All right, let's take a look at another pass. This time I'll try to have the restraint not to pause it. Okay, we're seeing the same... Actually, now we're getting actually pretty close range, right? And once again, we see that this time that uh, opening rotational shot of Miles really quick and into that opening, you know, we see that same opening um, throughout uh, the engagement here. For Miles' angle and height, he's just seeing that as an opportunity. And it's just that he happens to be, like, a really quick fighter. That offside, however, is a super lethal counter. And you can see, just wanting to uncork that offside to, take, to, to cut into that depilon hole. 
and Miles is sort of saved by getting out of it, getting out of range. So same sort, same sort of like high rotational shot. One thing I'll point out to me, I'm not sure that I would be able to take advantage of this. Miles is a pretty tough fighter, but the moment you see someone plant, square up, and drop, they right here, boom, that. That, to me, that's a bit of a bait. It's saying, like, I'm doing a dramatic motion. You're able to maintain some stability while uh, indicating aggression. But I don't think Miles is necessarily doing that as a feint. To me, that says a beat later, they're going to be frozen in place. I would be hoping, personally, to probably fire for a leg at this point. I'd be looking to shoot down at one of these legs. However, from this hand position, I'm not sure that, personally, I would be able to. If you look at the orientation of the hand... It's that way. That means, for me, uh, I would need to change the blade orientation to something like that before I could start to throw a shot down into this area, just based on my personal mechanics. So I'd need to roll the blade over first. So I think Miles is seeing from this position, um, there's not a strong offside leg, and there's not a, a f there's a strong but not a fast onside leg because you need to do that conversion in the first part of the shot. All right, we're setting up at that same distance again, this time opening on the other side, looking for sword defense. But again, Miles is just going really deep with the sword shot. Oh, now that's a really beautiful offside right there. So let's take a look at how that happened. That was actually a double offside, right? But it wasn't just a combo. The first shot was thrown... And then if we watch in slow motion, you can see he pauses and waits and then changes the angle slightly. Miles is thinking, I've got this, I can duck it, my sword's going to defend me. And he goes deeper, right? So the first shot's angle, I'm going to go back and watch them both here. The first shot, so this first thing that happens here, as soon as the hand gets sucked up to the face, that's to generate power. It provides a little bit of defense, but again, what that's doing is it's adding power into these muscles here so that you can throw the offside. So, And whenever you see that wind-up, that's either a wind-up and they're going to hold it, or it's a wind-up and throw. So there's the wind-up, throw, right? And you can see it just lashes out. But where it goes, the angle of attack right here the first time, and I can't really show the depth, um, and then the second shot, recover, shield up to sort of blind. And not only is that shield now blinding, um, it's also covering Miles' attack, right? So Miles' sword is not clear and can't really throw too much of an attack. Maybe a bit of a leg shot, but not much. But meanwhile, the body is being dislocated away from the camera, and the second offside drops at a higher, deeper angle, right? So the camera hasn't moved much, but we can see the sword is in a different place. And Miles has figured he's got this picked up on his basket hilt or something like that. But because the body did this shift away, and the second shot was thrown with different body mechanics after a full recovery, that gets deep enough to take the head. Really cool double offside. All right. Let's do maybe, uh, maybe one more pass. So there we see that was a, a shield punch to, de like, to basically lock the shield up. And then a pretty cool flurry, some mechanics worth taking a look at. So let's take a look at how the, the leg shot lands. Here again, and Miles is one of the, the, Duke Miles is one of the few people that you see square up quite so frequently at that range. Normally a lot of guys with that much height and that long a sword want to be fighting out at a distance. Um, and I think, uh, it, you know, we're seeing a lot more mixing up here. So he's actually, you know, traditionally speaking, this is the range um, that you would expect a tall fighter with a long sword to fight at. But this is where he's getting in and just squaring up. And now he's, as, as uh, Sir Akhtamasadi says, getting ready to drive the school bus. Right, so why does that leg shot land? He's gotten nice and close. He's waiting for the opportunity, and then he goes, pop. And what he does, just briefly stabilizes that shield. He doesn't hook it, he's not pressing it, he's not reefing on it. All he's done is stabilize it a little bit and that stops it from being able to move easily and distracts his opponent enough. And the moment that sword tip starts to drop from here, you know it's going to be a leg shot or a fake leg shot to head shot. So there it goes. 
into the thighs. Really good counter, but Miles is um, proactively gotten out. Now here we see something really interesting. Um, normally when I see someone place their toe, if you look at this toe position as he steps in, when you see them place like this, something unusual is going to happen. See that, that toe rotates? Um, how do I describe this? Let's just watch it in slow motion and maybe I'll come up with the right words. Still hard to describe, but okay. So what do you get in here? So Miles is, uh, what he does is he bounds forward from this position. And remember how earlier uh, we said that when you pull the hand and uh, over this way while rolling the sword edge this direction, usually it's a wind up for an offside. That's what you see here. It's a little bit different motion. You can see that it actually goes a bit of a bob instead of a straight pull. Um, but you can see right there, that's chambered for the offside. And you can tell it's chambered because the arm is like this. And right now, Miles is pretty exposed to, a, if there's a lightning quick counter offside over here, he's a bit exposed, but it's only a couple frames because he's going to unload that really quickly. And he did it on the jump, remember, he jumped in. So there's the offside. The defense is there, though. This is not that hard to read. In fact, it's almost thrown straight into the defense, right? Like, not a ton of movement needs to be made to block that first shot, but Miles is still stepping in. Now we've seen that sort of rotational shot a couple times before. He's going to want to uncork this way. Ooh, I should say more like that, right? Now that, in that case, this is really cool back edge shield block. You don't see this a ton, but that back edge is as useful for blocking as well. So there's that block. Good counter coming in too, right? So he's got, now the second shot has come. You see this leg coming in here. you got to throw for it. So it throws for the leg but gets a little bound up by his own shield edge, I think, right? So now does can't quite manage the leg shot. There's a half beat, and then Miles throws a deep wrap. And that's the one that lands. So let's take a look one more time in slow motion. The wrap is not expected, especially after the back edge block. There, and then deep wrap. And you see the hand moves a long ways down. So this is this is the hand position after the the second shot. Look where the hand is for the wrap. The hand is now down here and further away from, maybe not quite that far, down here and further away from uh, the camera and just sneaks around under the edge. So really cool shot. Cool. Well, um, hopefully this was uh, a bit interesting for you. I really love to see dynamic fights like this. I realize I'm uploading it a little late, but I am going to try to keep to roughly getting these done weekly. And uh, if you've got any recommendations for other fun fights to take a look at, Please do let me know um, and have yourself a great week.